well, as the world looks on um, with uh, anticipation and some would say trepidation, the U.S. Uh, is uh, counting votes and we are continuing our discussion on the United States presidential election, probably the most highly contested and divisive in the country. And uh, we're joined by Professor John Stremlau now, uh, who is an expert on international relations and he's with the University of the Witwatersrand and uh, he's going to help us navigate through some more of these results as they trickle in. Professor Stremlau, thanks for speaking to us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. So uh, let's just take a look. Um, I'm just uh, trying to get the latest information here and uh, looking at the Financial Times as of two minutes ago, Joe Biden, uh, 223 to that race to 270 electoral college votes. Uh, Donald Trump at the moment, 173. And uh, just taking a look at the map there, and uh, we were speaking to our correspondent, Show and Bryce Pease, earlier. But, Professor, uh, at this stage, is it still too early to call this election? It certainly is. And don't forget that COVID is raging in the United States. And most uh, voters, uh, more than, uh, than uh, half of the ones that voted, more than two thirds of the ones that voted in 2016, voted early. They voted by mail and they voted at early voting stations. And those have to be processed and carefully assessed. And so it's, um, it's clear that. Uh, Biden started with a fundamental base of over 200 electoral votes in the solidly blue states. And Donald Trump uh, started with 120 in the solid red states. And your, your numbers reflect that. But it's still a long march to 270. And, and Biden certainly has the advantage. Uh, but whether or not he can uh, maintain that will depend on what uh, is counted in the, uh, in the absentee ballots. Uh, and, and that's going to take a little while. Uh, let's talk about those absentee ballots because uh, there has, of course, uh, been concern expressed about that and um, the courts getting involved uh, with uh, trying to get uh, the United States Postal Service to actually make sure that there's a sweep so that all of those ballots uh, could be uh, brought to the fore and uh, be counted. So. Let's talk about that because, again, that question as to whether all of those votes, in fact, will be counted. But, Professor, I'm just going to ask you to please hold that thought for me because I understand that uh, the Democrat challenger, uh, Joe Biden, is about to address the nation. So we're going to take you live there to hear what it is that he has to say at this stage. And we're feeling real good about Wisconsin and Michigan. And by the way, it's going to take time to count the votes. We're going to win Pennsylvania. Yes. I'm going to talk to the folks in Philly, Allegheny County, Scranton, and they're really encouraged by the turnout and what they see. Look, you know, we could know the results as early as tomorrow morning, but it may take a little longer, as I've said all along. It's not my place or Donald Trump's place to declare who's won this election. That's the decision of the American people. But I'm optimistic about this outcome. And I want to thank every one of you who came out and voted in this election. And by the way, Chris Coons and the Democrats, congratulations here in Delaware. John Carney. Hey, John, the Gov, yeah, I, I, the whole team, man. You've done a great job. I'm grateful to the poll workers, to our volunteers, our canvassers, everyone who participated in this democratic process. And I'm grateful to all of my supporters here in Delaware and all across the nation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And folks, you heard me say it before. Every time I walk out of my grandpa's house up in Scranton, he'd yell, Joey, keep the faith. And my grandma, when she was alive, he'll know, Joey, spread it. Keep the faith, guys. We're going to win this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your patience is great. Let's walk over here. Right, and that, of course, uh, presidential hopeful Joe Biden and uh, basically just thanking those around him and uh, his campaign and uh, remaining hopeful there. Professor Stremla with us uh, to help us navigate through uh, some of uh, the latest happenings as the United States decides. Professor Stremla, um, before we get into those other issues, uh, your comment on uh, uh, what uh, the uh, challenger Joe Biden had to say there and um, still cautiously optimistic, it would seem. 
Well, he has to be, and it's very important for him to be speaking out now because Donald Trump monopolizes the airways or the Twitter sphere. And his um, strategy, Trump's strategy, seemed to be to get the Republicans to vote on Election Day, never mind COVID, and to um, declare himself the winner early on, despite all of his grievances, his personal grievances. Joe Biden strikes a very different note of unity, of healing, of coming together as Americans, and that he would represent all of the American people, not just his faction. And uh, it is a very important test for democracy generally, but for the American democracy in particular. And uh, I guess I can just have some confidence that the voters did uh, get out early and they did vote in large numbers, unprecedented numbers of 100 plus million voters early, and they've done it peacefully. Uh, there's been no real re re reports of the militias that we worried about that uh, Donald Trump was stirring up. So that the election day yesterday went okay, as far as we can tell. And uh, now it, it does come down to counting every vote. And um, let's hope that the electoral bodies can maintain that. But in the U.S., there are 50 different ones. It's not like South Africa with one independent, in, independent electoral commission. So um, it, it's going to be a while before we know, but, but maybe uh, tomorrow we'll have an answer. And this record turnout um, expected to uh, be in the region of 160 million um, overall. What does this mean for both the Democrats and, of course, the Republicans? Well, what it means for democracy in the first instance is that despite all the cynicism, despite the polarization, despite the, uh, the, the, the voters telling uh, pollsters that they don't have any confidence in the electoral system, they, they voted literally with their feet or with their uh, uh, um, mail-in ballots. And that's a good sign for um, a revival of, of civic nationalism in the United States. But it's still too soon to tell whether or not Donald Trump's appeal to white ethnic nationalists and to the um, uh, historic majority in America, because America is a transforming nation. It's becoming more diverse, more inclusive of uh, the diversity that is, is no, well known down here in South Africa. And that's the real test of democracy. Can you uh, be a united country uh, home to all who live in it? And, and that's what America is straining right now to, to come to some agreement over. And mm -hmm. so I really think it is a, a, a successful test and that America moves on as, as a, a more international global country. And then interestingly, though, um, you know, speaking about a, a united America and Donald Trump and what his appeal may be, you know, many people question that. But if you look at the last election, 13 percent of African-American men actually voted for Donald Trump. And the predictions was that it would uh, perhaps go up to about 15 percent. And there was, of course, also talk in the last election that um, African-American men, um, if you look at the state of Florida, for example, if they had voted had come out in their numbers to vote for Hillary Clinton in that particular event. She could have won that election, but they didn't. So this time around, just looking at the racial demographic, the breakdown, talking to states like Florida, states like Texas, um, uh, which, uh, depending on which news network you're looking at right now, um, are calling it for uh, the incumbent, uh, President Donald Trump. Talk to us about, you know, the importance of these racial demographics and how they actually impact on these votes and uh, some of the key states. Well, I, I can't break it down, um, but I want to make a general point, which I think is worth keeping in mind. If there had not been the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in 1920, women would not have the right to vote. If there had not been the civil rights um, uh, legislation in the 1960s, uh, African Americans would not have the right to vote. Now, women overwhelmingly vote for Joe Biden. Men have been drawn to Donald Trump and his machismo. Th these are emotional questions, they're complicated questions, and human beings are what human beings are. So that the exercise of persuading, uh, persuading people to vote uh, first has to be assured that they have the vote to begin with. And thank God women have the vote and African Americans have the vote. And there's still voter suppression going on in the United States. 
There's still all sorts of uh, 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 efforts to try to suppress that vote, particularly by the Republicans who are in the minority. But at least America is not governed by white male property owners. And so that's progress, but it's slow and it's difficult. So before this election, of course, there was talk about whether um, both sides would actually accept uh, the election results, given some of the discrepancies that had already been raised prior uh, to the polls opening. Is that still a factor at this stage, Professor Stremler? Well, yeah, yeah it, the, the issue you raise is a profound one and an important one. Never before has a candidate for president um, indicated that they might not take the results, which is what Donald Trump has done. Let me remind you that Hillary Clinton won by 3 million votes, but she accepted the result as the Electoral College processed it, even though only 70,000 to 80,000 votes in three key states um, made the difference. But that's the American system, and it has been operating for 230 years. Al Gore accepted the result when he, he lost in Florida the, the popular vote, but the Supreme Court uh, gave it to, to uh, George W. Bush in 2000. Um, you've got to have the consent of the losers. And that's what Donald Trump has threatened the American democracy most profoundly by saying he might not accept the results. Come on. We have to have a democracy where elections matter and they're conducted with integrity. So uh, we heard some reports coming through um, yesterday that there was um, a, um, a unscalable wall uh, that was erected around the White House. Uh, should we be reading anything into that with regard to that particular question, or is that just uh, for safety reasons at this point? I think at this moment, uh, uh, security people tend to do worst-case analysis, and so they prepare for the worst-case scenario. What is important is that there's been no violence that I can see other than some Trump uh, a, a train, so-called, of these automobiles that have been harassing uh, uh, Biden supporters in Texas and, and New Jersey and a couple of other states, and they didn't really come to very much. Um, I, this is a very, very important story that uh, Americans still, although for how long one doesn't know, uh, appear to be uh, willing to play by the rules and get their votes counted and even take some risks with the COVID to do that. So. Um, there, there, there are nat naturally going to be police doing defensive maneuvers for the worst case, but so far the worst case hasn't happened, and I pray to God it won't. And um, the incumbent uh, President Trump has also come out saying that he wants those election results uh, declared uh, today, as it were. But of course, we know with those um, early votes, uh, the postal votes, uh, it may not be possible. So is he likely to once again make an issue out of that? Sure, he'll make an issue, but, you know, no man is above the law, as Nelson Mandela reminded us all. Donald Trump has not, not, let, not yet learned that lesson, but he's had no experience, and he's not been, to say the least, a very effective president. And so he is fomenting this uncertainty about the electoral outcome and wants to declare himself winner. Now, of course, uh, we don't have a Zondo commission in the United States, but I, if I had Donald Trump's legal and other... Uh, problems looming. I'd want to hold on to office as long as I can. This may sound like uh, an African incumbent in a more autocratic regime and not in a democracy. And that's the test that this democracy in the United States is going through right now, no different than so many other countries in the world from period peri periodically have to uh, endure. And I just hope that democracy uh, continues whoever wins. What would this outcome ultimately mean for uh, South Africa and Africa at large? Does it really matter? Is it really going to change anything fundamentally uh, with regard to the United States uh, foreign policy outlook towards the continent and towards South Africa specifically? Well, you have to draw, draw one fundamental distinction. On regular programs, even under Donald Trump, the PEPFAR for HIV AIDS or Feed the Future or Power Africa have continued. They have bipartisan congressional support. On the more profound question of whether or not we can have accountable government, whether or not democracy will spread, whether or not the constitutive act of the African Union or the African Charter of Democracy Elections and Governance has staying power, it would certainly help to have uh, a, a United States that is at least uh, a credible democracy and not run by a crypto demagogue or authoritarian 
like uh, Donald Trump has behaved in the last four years. That really is profound, and it really does matter for those Democrats in Africa, like here in South Africa, who are trying to make these very difficult experiments work. So just uh, finally, Professor Stremlau, uh, looking at uh, what the possible scenarios could be for the United States. Should Trump emerge victorious once again, what does that mean for the United States? And uh, if Biden uh, manages to pip him to that uh, top post, what does it mean for the country? Well, Biden has made it clear that he's for inclusion and for um, healing and, uh, and, and recovery and dealing with COVID in a scientific manner and in, and in dealing with the, the desperate economic situation and racial systemic racism that still infects America uh, in, a, in a constructive way. And, and, and I think we'll spend big to try to do, do that and, and, and tax us accordingly. Donald Trump has not put out a platform for his second term. His party did not have a, a new platform at its convention uh, a, a couple of months ago. And so we really don't know. I think it'll be more of the same. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning, Professor John Stremla, and uh, of course, helping us to uh, monitor this particular U.S. election and also analyze and unpack what is currently happening. And as uh, many of uh, our um, uh, experts this morning have said, it is early days yet. It is still too early to call, but we'll keep updating you as those results come through.